Mike Tesla and Google, one, two, one, two, check, check. I'm Shane Bergman. This is Impractical Brokers. I'm Jesse Roddinghouse. This is Impractical Brokers, where we're cutting through the bullshit, breaking down the gatekeeping in real estate and business, and discussing the impractical ways to be successful. Time out. You can cut that. Welcome to Impractical Brokers. Like, I mean, it's the fucking show, and then you can say... <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Impractical Brokers. We have a fantastic guest uh, with us today. Been in New York for a very long time, and up until about the last two years, has been really making waves down here, expanding into the area. Uh, he owns property in Brevard County and is looking at expanding his mortgage industry there. We have Rajan Ramdahal, who is the Senior Vice President at Meadowbrook Financial Mortgage Bankers. He's been doing mortgages for 20 plus years. He's been Senior Vice President for four. Before that, he was the VP for three, and then two years as a Senior Loan Officer. So this guy knows his shit. He's extremely <laughs> talented, incredible, charismatic, great on camera. Uh, so welcome to the show, Rajan. Oh, man, I appreciate yeah. it. Shane, Jesse, thank <laughs> yeah. you guys for being on here yeah uh, <laughs> impractical brokers i love the name i can't tell everyone enough about it man so the name's given us a lot of wings i feel like it's helped us out a lot um it's, and it's applicable to the kind of the way we we function and, and also keeps us you know in the space of talking about things that, that we're comfortable with yeah. um so kind of like rolling right into it it's your birthday right so yeah not i mean and i want to kind of talk about some things about not only your birthday but also valentine's day yeah okay oh wow this we're great going, we're going <laughs> we're right, just going into, right it. into it right <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> all right Go yeah right man ahead. so yeah. but it's, it's going to relate into <laughs> the financial realm for sure and we'll get back yeah, to that spend a lot of money on your wife on valentine's day or get your ass kicked <laughs> <laughs> but before the show i just want to talk about it while it's still fresh so before the show we kind of talked about things to do things not to do for financial reasons during valentine's day what's kind of, what's some advice that you'd give some of us guys out there being that you're a financial guru you're a financial Absolutely. Guru. uh save your last two paychecks uh or <laughs> this one that's coming up and make sure you spend it on your wife um <laughs> because if not you know again she controls everything and and if you don't do that she will make you pay for it so my <laughs> advice would be uh make sure you spend the money it's 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 so worth it um <laughs> it's good investment exactly right you can't go wrong with that um you know, it, it gets you a lot of brownie points, right? Yeah. That's man. what I would say. No, that's, that's the best advice that I need to hear. I unless, a... unless, and now here's a, a nice plug, unless you're my wife who says, do not spend that crazy amount of money on me and put it somewhere it's something, you know, nice that we can enjoy as a family and let's make a home-cooked meal together because I work long hours and so she appreciates the time. I love you, hon. Oh, man. That's <laughs> great, <dude. laughs> wow. 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 Oh, yep. We just so got sentimental. crushed. <laughs> just yeah, got crushed. I'm not going to even try to top <laughs> yeah. that. Um, yeah. So you're expanding down in the Florida, and, and I met you, it was, you know, not too long ago, and, yeah. and it was on a podcast where you're talking about kind of the market in Florida and how people in New York are moving down here and really kind of like trying to expose that yeah. as, from a like financial standpoint where there's still viable investments in this area. Absolutely. What is it about Florida that dr that draws people from New York? So there's a multitude of things right now that we're seeing, um, especially over the last two years. Right. So the first part of it was like with covid, people were like, uh, if I'm going to be stuck indoors all the time, I'd rather be stuck indoors in Florida or just be able to get out in Florida. So that was the first kind of wave where everyone was like, hey, listen, I, I need to get out of New York. I need to get out of New Jersey. I need to get out of Connecticut and I got to go south. So that was the, the big appeal. People were buying second homes, vacation homes. Right. Um, and so now after that, what we started realizing was people were realizing, hey, you know, market's really doing great in Florida, right? Prices are appreciating. We're starting to see a lot of movement. And so we started starting to see a lot of uh, investors that are coming out here now that are like, hey, you know, I want to invest, especially because we've seen what has happened in Miami over the last two years and yeah. the explosion of what happened there. So I think it put a huge, you know, uh, lens on Florida as a whole. And I can tell you this much, there's probably not anyone that I have a conversation with in New York, whether they're in the financial industry, real estate industry, whatever it is, that doesn't have a conversation about, hey, the possibility of moving out to Florida, owning something in Florida, uh, opening some type of business in Florida, expanding it to Florida. So again, whether I'm dealing with you know, first time home buyers that are looking to relocate because there's opportunities down here, 
um, for family, for just all different uh, other reasons, affordability. Um, it's also a lot about investing. And we've got a lot of investors that are like, hey, man, I've got money to deploy in. You know, I think I can get some really great returns in Florida. So for all those rate sayers, right, <laughs> where I mean, I get it when the pandemic and people were buying and transitioning like crazy and in conjunction with lower rates, mm -hmm. but rates have gone up. Like, yeah. So for all those people that are like, you know, like I said, rate sayers, are you do you find that those conversations are still continuing and even even more? They're still continuing um, because what we've actually seen a lot of people take advantage of over the last year um, and even right now, even though rates kind of had want, uh, gone up and came back down mm -hmm. a bit, people are like, hey, I've got all of this equity. So why not take something out and invest it, right? Because <clears throat> what they realize is putting in the bank doesn't do anything for them. <clears throat> so if I can cash out some money, um, go buy something in Florida and enjoy the best of both worlds, again, spend you know most of my time in New York, but I could come down to Florida for a month or two um and enjoy that weather like people are still doing that you know yeah. up until this morning matter of fact i had a a client of mine from like 16 years ago that's like hey you know i need to get something out in florida like where do you suggest and i'm like perfect i got the right place for you but those are the conversations that myself my loan officers like those are the conversations we're still having on a daily basis so yeah. yeah, it's it's still profound out there. Like yeah. you know, that movement is still there. And I would imagine it also has something to do with um, uh, uh, the cost to construct as well. Like I yes. mean, you know, getting something down here that's a thousand square feet at two hundred dollars a square foot or three hundred dollars a square mm -hmm. foot versus in New York, a thousand square feet might be seven hundred dollars square feet. I mean, I don't. I don't so know. yeah, you're right. And because I've always and had that those is conversations a, and that too. is a really great uh, thing that you brought up because affordability is still a major problem in New York. Um, you know, again, uh, I'll, I'll share like Long Island because I deal with that on a daily basis, right? So, you know, we're talking a 2,000 square foot home um, at a bargain is about like 600,000, 650, right? And that's, that's a property that needs work. We're not talking about new constructions yeah. or something just built over the last couple of years or whatever. We're talking about, you know, from like 1942. Wow. So you're going into that at six, 650. And you're, you're probably going to, you know, over time, I mean, no one has the money to do the work right away, but, you know, you're probably going to put about 100, 150 into it over the next couple of years to get it to where you want it to be at. And if you buy something that's a new construction or, well, not really more new constructions, they do a lot of flips. So if you buy like a newly renovated property, uh, you're probably going to pay, like I said, 700, 800 for something like that. Yeah. So when they so, see the prices down here, it's just kind so of... So then when you're looking at the type of house that you're going to get, right? the beauty of the house and at the price it's like it's a bargain right yeah. it's like a you know comparatively a 50, it's like a 50 percent deal it's like okay why not uh, yeah. you know and that's 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 why you're seeing a lot of people also moving out here yeah. and what was it about um the space coast that you first identified as because florida is a, a massive state and i think we generalize a lot like new york to florida but there's a lot of locations in florida yeah. where you could be specifically so what was it about the space coast that attracted you to that location so look i'll be very honest i had no clue about the space coast so my my in-laws first wanted to move out here and i came down with them and i was like hmm. they had heard about it from like you know like a family friend that type of thing and they came down here and we were down here and i was like oh it's kind of nice out here it's it's not so bad when you say here you mean I, out in I, space I, coast in the space <clears throat> coast right because you're from new york there's yeah. only like a couple of places you know orlando <laughs> fort lauderdale miami right. yeah. tampa like yeah. that's really it you don't really know space coast yeah no one talks about that so I'm down here and I'm like, oh, this is this is actually kind of nice. And then so they bought a place down here and we started kind of coming, my wife and I, you know, over the couple of years and, and we're looking. And of course, for me, it's always looking at, hey, Numbers. How, <laughs> how, how, exactly. How's the market doing down here? What's going on? And at that time, like seven years, six, seven years ago, you know, Vieira was really starting to kind of get built out. And I remember speaking to, with the realtor at that time, and she was like, you know, you, you should really look into this area. Like, they're really going to do a lot of great things out here. Um, and so from looking at, at that project of what was going to be happening, just getting a feel for the area and the vibe and everything else, and I was like, this is, this is, this is pretty nice. And so I then started investing into some properties down here because cash flow was pretty good. Again, mm -hmm. you know, four years ago, five years ago, yeah. you could buy a single family property in Melbourne. Like my first property was two and change. Low two, twos, yeah. 235, yeah. right? <clears throat> that same property right now is worth about 450. Not bad, right? 
Um, so over time, I'm like, this is great. I mean, again, from a price point and from what the rental market was, I can cash flow pretty easily. So that's why I started doing that. And then kind of work my way up in terms of getting a place out in like, you know, in Saddle, Satellite yeah. Beach, which again, worked out to be an amazing, amazing Oceanfront, Oceanfront Satellite Beach. Not just like a, a <laughs> yeah. satellite, but Oceanfront. Yeah, yeah. 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 worked out to be an amazing uh, opportunity. But again, just seeing how that did and everything else that's going on. And I'm just, I can't tell everyone enough how excited I am about what I see happening down here. Like everyone I speak to in New York that's seeing all the stuff that I'm doing and they're like, how is it down there? And I'm like, you, you really got to get down here to see what's happening. Like, it is amazing. Now, obviously, in our industries, we're, we, we're pretty blessed to be able to kind of work from anywhere, mm -hmm. right? But how often, how much time do you spend, do you think, in, in Space Coast, like personally? So this is the longest that I've spent down here recently, which is about two months now. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to spend about another two to three weeks down here. So almost three months. Wow. Um, and... I've been able to do a ton of business. And the beauty of actually what's been happening, even in our industry, is everything is doing digital. Yeah. Right? So, like, our company launched four years ago our own mobile app. So you literally can be on your iPad, your phone, your computer. You can complete your application, upload your paperwork. Your status. Yeah. I mean, pretty much now, you can even do your closing right on, right on your tablet. So wow. you don't even have to go into an office. Whereas, you know, like five years ago, 10 years ago, it's like, I want to buy a house? Sure. Come, Come into down. the office. Yeah. Everything was in the office, in the yep. office. Now you're talking to everyone. I'm like, I give them the option. Hey, what do you want to do? You want to come to the office or do you want to just do everything digitally? Oh, yeah, no, I'll just, I'll upload everything on your yeah. app and yeah, call it a day. <laughs> and half the clients, we don't even meet face to face anymore. Or we yeah. don't even get to meet them at all. You know, so the wow. beauty is I could be down here and everything's still running up north. You know, deals are closing, everything's processing, everything's being handled, and we can build out what we're doing down here. Well, and yeah. one of the things we had, like, when we, when we first met, we talked about was you had casually thrown out, oh, I'm a, more, I'm a banker. Yeah. And then I, I think you saw my facial response. Cause uh -huh. like, what, what do you mean, banker? Like, because it's like a term. <laughs> and even Jesse and I were talking before the show about that. Yeah. Um, and then you were quick to retort and say, like, in New York, if you're not a banker, like, no one's really going to take you seriously. Yeah. So uh, can you kind of elaborate, elaborate on, that. on that like what what it means to be a banker and then what what power and, and why it's a benefit yeah. and adding on to that in florida if you have since you've been here for quite some time have you noticed like because i was telling shane i'm like the, the word banker isn't thrown around it's here in broker. florida it's yeah broker, broker or broker. correspondent lender yeah. or whatever yes. Like, yes yeah yes. so i'm like banker yeah like, yeah. like yeah. top hat and like all this like, so yeah, yeah. definitely a yeah kid yeah like, so all my all that. my mortgage broker friends out there are gonna hate me but <laughs> the reality is um you know look i've been a mortgage banker for or y you can kind of consider also as like a correspondent lender right yeah so i've been a mortgage banker for my entire career um what i believe is great about bankers are is the control that you have um everything is in-house Right? So we're a small to mid-sized mortgage bank. So our processing, our underwriting, our funding, everything is in-house. So literally, if a deal comes in, the underwriter is looking at it, hey, I've got questions. It's not through an email. It's not through a phone call. It's I can walk right over, say, hey, what's going on? Let's talk about it, figure it out, and get deals done. So there's a lot more control of what's happening with your file. What I've always found in my career, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, right? Like, I do a lot of business with realtors, and their number one complaint is information communication, right? Like, I can never hear from my, my lender or mm -hmm. my, my, my mortgage broker or my loan officer. I can never hear from them. I can never get answers. I don't know what's happening with the file. Like, there's no communication. Or if there's an issue that happens, like, no one knows what's happening with that. It's so different with us because everything being in-house it's literally processing is communicating with underwriting right there back and forth all day long so there's always going to be an answer so again even from us servicing our own loans um underwriting everything is just being in-house to me gives you so much more control yeah you're, I mean, able, to do, you're able to do it quickly too from, from oh absolutely so yeah. again being able to have that kind of control like we we've we close purchases in 15 days 21 days i mean we and can this move is conventional too, and not. And that's private. in New yeah. York, and that's an attorney state, right? It, exactly. So, yeah. That's and, remarkably and, fast. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and we've closed deals down here too, where we're pushing everyone, and we're like, "Hey, we're ready to close in like 14 days, 15 days," 
And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, <laughs> we're not ready. We haven't even gotten through Wait, inspection yeah, yet. That's like that. closing date. On, yeah. or, on or about is we like. We haven't even done yeah. the appraisal. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. On or about is like, you know, 15 days from now. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, we're ready to go. Ready Our clients to rock, are ready to man. go. Yeah. Come on. Let's get this done. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, we love, and I love that because everyone's impressed by it. Um, and especially, like, the way our system is, it's it's a well-oiled machine. You know, deals come in. They go out. Um and part of that is because of the staff that we have. We have underwriters that pre-underwrite files ahead of time. So it's not just giving you like an AUS finding and saying, oh, well, you know, I got, I got an approval there. I'm great. No, you actually have an underwriter that's like pre-underwriting everything. So then that file comes in, it's just going yeah, straight through. I mean, it's, it's amazing because, um, I mean, we have a lot of mortgage broker right. friends that are, and I think what you said is true. Uh, they're, they're a dime a dozen in a sense. Some of them are phenomenal with their follow-up, mm -hmm. but you know, we had a private lender in here as well. And he talked about having that local sort of underwriting capability yeah. and, and the, in the final say, which is a big deal because I think what we end up running into is when we're reaching out to our mortgage broker and saying, Hey, and then they're like, oh, well, it's in underwriting. Right. Okay, well, underwriting is in California. Yeah, underwriting is, is in... Well, that's what I was just going to so say, that, right? So, or wherever it is. Yeah. And then yeah. they're like, okay, well, we're waiting for underwriting. I, I should know in the next 48 to 72 hours. Correct, because that's and your turn so, time. Yeah, yeah, which is like what you're saying. It's like, okay, well, underwriting is two doors down. Yeah. Like, we're going to go down two doors down. Yeah. Right. And we potentially can get you seconds. the same answer because same day, potentially. Ex exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, again, from a mortgage uh, broker's perspective, right, they are, they are, they've got all these lenders... Right, different they are, products. That right. they're sending that file out to. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So now when they send that file out to them, that underwriter, like you said, could be in the Midwest, could be out, you well, know. Well, first it's got to go through Coast. person A, B, C to and even get to all the actual these channel, <laughs> channels, right? right? And so that underwriter is not going to pick up that phone and say, hey, let me call that loan officer and, and, you know, really get to the bottom of this so I can clear this file today. It's, you know, right. I will send you an email if I have a question or work through the other channels of getting you that answer. So if you're a loan officer, you just you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs saying, okay, I just got to wait. Whenever I get the answer, I get the answers, right? So if there's something that's really pressing, you there's nothing you could do about it. Whereas with me, like you just said, if I need something done today to get a file cleared to close today, I can do that. I walk down the hall, walk into the underwriter operations manager, head of underwriting saying, hey, this, got, this, ha this has to close today, yeah. done. We don't have a lot of the, that kind of, I mean, personally, like a lot of the people I work with, lending wise, don't have that kind of power. Or that no, power. and and also I think it's it a, seems rare, it, like for this area. And it's also a, I think a stigma right now in our market too, with regards to. Uh, I know I've I've coined the phrase before, like your your loan letter is as good as your paper you've written on, right? Absolutely. The, but Absolutely. but you're just saying, hey, my paper is better than your paper in yeah. a sense, because at the end of the day, Absolutely. when you've underwritten it, which I think um, says a lot for all of us agents that are trying to get deals done we get this letter and it's like, okay, well, did they really qualify? Did, we they, like, did they get pay the stuff? Yes. Did they all get this? Yes. Yep. And it's the same thing in New York. Rather than just yeah. a, a quick app and it's like, okay, cool, here's your letter, you're approved yeah. for this. Yeah. Well, are you really approved? Or, you know, so you and, guys and, go. And, and it's the same exact thing that we're experiencing over there where it's like, I, I have this letter in my hand, but like, is it really quality, right? Like, right. does it really mean something? And so, um, like, what what my loan officers you know what they do is basically they will say hey have that listing agent contact me and i will explain to them that like we've absolutely looked through everything right. and even when we provide the uh pre-commitment letter it, it will tell you that we've reviewed pay stubs mm -hmm. w-2s bank statements you know tax returns like everything right through underwriting yeah to me it especially in this day and age it's it's got to be about the quality right like mm -hmm. we're not here to waste our time and we definitely don't want to waste our our agents and our referral partners times, you know what I mean? So we have a saying, and I'm sure you guys say it all the time too, it's like, you're only as good as your last deal, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So we've got to make sure that every single deal closes. That's just our motto. And you know, I always I have a hashtag I've always said, which is no deals left behind. That's my slogan. I don't leave a deal behind, meaning That's cool. every deal yeah, has I to like get it. closed, every deal has to get done, find a way to get it done. You're getting creative and, and making it happen. Yeah. And when you said, 
like your your paper's better like what are you saying jesse yeah it is though <laughs> well, well here's like the real thing so again when i first met you and when i was leaving you had given me your, your business card and i don't know if you remember this he, yes. gave me, he gave me two things one was a business card and one was a postcard thing in a yeah. an envelope the business card the first thing i said was this motherfucker is thick <laughs> and i'm like how like it was like it, i wish i had it with me because it was literally like four they glue them together dude it was dude. so yeah. freaking thick and it had like a foil in gray it was just an incredible card um, and I admit, I told you that, and yeah. you're like, man, again, in New York, if you don't have this kind of quality, like people aren't going to think you're the real deal. Yeah. And then the postcard thing that you gave me, I was like, what the hell is this? So ended up taking it home and open it up. And it was one of these, um, it was a like video a video card. postcard things where you open it up and it has yeah. this video. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I get home, I open this. I was like, oh, this is nice. So I watched the video and it's like, hi, you know, hi, I'm Roger Ramdahal, senior vice president, blah, blah, blah. And it goes yeah. through this whole spiel and you shut it and it turns off. So I watched the whole video and then I put it on my countertop. And then my two year old son gets a hold of this thing. Yeah. And er literally, <laughs> open, close, open, close. A billion <laughs> times. Like, I don't know if you know those things could die. But he watched it so many times. <laughs> and I heard your name. Just, hi, I'm Raj. Hi, I'm Raj. Hi, I'm Raj. Hi, I'm Raj. Senior vice president. And like, I knew it. I love that. I got a market. It towards kids next. Hey, they loved no, but it, man. That's a great reel. Actually. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, I'm Raj. Hi, I'm Raj. I thought Hi, about Raj. putting a little video together for you, but he was so fascinated. He yeah. literally went down to his little table and just watched the whole thing. <laughs> Sound, yeah. Dude, it was just like really well done, and I wanted to let you know that. Oh, that's awesome, man. I <laughs> love that. Cool. I love that. But the that. quality of the stuff that you're putting out is amazing. So not only your marketing material from your cards, the quality of business that you're doing, but your social media presence is yeah. astounding. It's badass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and. And I, uh, we should definitely talk about that a little bit. Like, it seems like you're putting out a ton of content, yeah. and you're an extremely busy guy. How how are you finding the time to do that? Are uh, you? Yeah, no, I have a team. Um, you know, and so just kind of giving a backstory to that. You know, I I've especially like over the last seven years, I, I've been big about social media. Um, so be, even before pandemic, like even before were, that, yeah, no, I because a lot of people fell into it in pandemic yeah. and we're like, I got to do this. Yeah, no. So it was before that. I, I, I remember my first video that I put out was, you know, who is Roger Ramdahal? And that was uh, like seven years, eight years ago, I think. And we had gotten like 60,000 views. And I was like, holy crap. On, on which platform? And like Facebook, oh, right? Facebook, like, yeah. So okay. again, Facebook was everything yeah. back then, right? And it was like, holy crap. We got like, you know, 60,000 views on Facebook. We went viral. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I'm super I'm, viral. I'm, I'm like, I'm the shit, right? <laughs> um, and, 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 but what happened was exactly what I thought would have happened. And, and I spent a lot of time researching like, what's what's ahead in technology like what's big you know and in, when i thought about social media at that time and especially like i was looking at facebook and ads on facebook and stuff like that and i'm like you're really in front of so many people so you don't have to be isolated with just trying to make relationships on a face-to-face -face basis right like you could just put this out there and like all your family friends whoever is out there is seeing you so i was like you know what that's that's the next big play and I remember reading an article that had talked about Instagram. And at that point, literally, the only thing that was popular about Instagram was everyone was posting like still pictures. Yeah. That was it. And uh, I was like, you know, I, I read that like Instagram was going to be the next thing. And so I went out and I actually hired a social media guy to just post stuff for me. Um, and people thought I was stupid because they were like, why the hell would you just waste money on that? Like, just do well, it yourself, do it. right? It. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, mm, you know what? I, I want to just be putting things out there and I need direction. I need someone to do that stuff. And, and that's kind of how it started. And with the Facebook thing, I remember getting like just tons of people just reaching out to me like, I forgot that you do mortgages. I forgot you're in the industry. I, you know, I, I even had like old clients of mine. They're like, hey, I saw your video, man. Guess what? I was thinking about refinancing or buying another property or I have a, a brother or whatever. And I was like, holy crap. Yeah. This it's works. Working. Yeah. And then ever since then, that's exactly what I did. So over time, like right now, I have a team of four people that do all my social media content, everything. Like I just, I go in one day, shoot a ton of content, put it out there and, you know, we get we get a great great amount of feedback so you, on so, it. So so one, one what? <laughs> there's the four people. It's like I didn't know you had an entourage doing this. Because like when I when uh, when you were first coming down, you asked yeah. like if I knew a studio on the coast. So I sent you over to Coastal Luxury. Yes. And then I went on and met Raj after that for his podcast. And then as I'm going in there, the whole crew was like, "This guy is fucking good." And I was like, "What do you mean?" He was like, "No, tell he didn't do any two takes. <laughs> like everything he shot that day was first one, one and done." Yeah. Which is like, wow. yeah, that's clearly they, I didn't they came out. Did. They came out. They looked at me. They were like. <laughs> 
<laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> like, yeah, and I was like, what? I don't know who he is, you know. But clearly, I mean, you got seven years of experience doing that. Yeah. Like, shit, man. Yeah. So you, ha- you, so you, you isolate one day a week where you go in and batch a whole bunch so of content. So it'll, it'll either be like one day every two weeks or even one day a month. Um, because uh, honestly, like, I am just so super inundated with work, you know, with everything meetings and events right. and everything else so like we'll set aside one day i have one guy that puts all the kind of content ideas together the other one that preps everything in terms of what we're shooting and like the direction we're going in and i go in that day and we knock out sometimes like 30 40 pieces worth of content <laughs> so the content that you'll do <laughs> is it, it isn't like for i mean i'm sure you have uh Buckets. ideas that you yeah. put together and you put mm-hmm. in your notes and yes but you would actually have someone employed to 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 additionally yeah. come up with, hey, we're, we're, there's A, B, they'll, C, and D. They'll research, they'll see and then, what's trending in the market. And then you get caught up on it, and then yeah. you're like, okay, cool, I'm going to go. Like, yeah, that's it. They just say, hey, this is what we're talking about next, or they'll read a bunch of questions like that they had, and I'll be like, all right, let's cover that one, let's do this one, let's do that one, and that's it. That's next level. No, man, 30 pieces in it. Yeah, that's next level. I couldn't <laughs> imagine, man. I'd be, I'm, I would just sometimes do like four, and I'm, I feel really good about that in a day where I'm like, yeah. I knocked out four, man, I'm yeah. efficient. Oh, like, fuck you, I got to tell you, though, when I'm, when I'm finished that day, I'm just like, Famished. It's exhausting, man. Done. Like, go home, take a nap, knock out. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So that's why I try to do it like maybe like once at max twice a month. Because you're, I mean, you're like consistently putting out content. And, mo- and I would say most of it is is in what we would call like the knowledge broker yeah. kind of bucket where it's information that people don't necessarily always know about it. Would you say that's a lot like the majority of the content you focus on or what's kind yeah. of the approach with that? Absolutely. You know. Now, this kind of is where the last two years come into play, right? Um, obviously, we've seen TikTok and just everything else that's happening. And even with Instagram, like, there's just all the informational pieces that people are putting out there. Um, what pissed me off, uh, quite frankly, was, like, I go through it, and I'm just seeing the same thing over and over, whether it was from agents or whether it was from, like, you know, mortgage brokers, loan officers. It was, like... Did you know you could buy a house with three and a half percent down? Did you know about an FHA loan? Did you know about, you know, conventional you could buy with, you know, five percent? And it was like everyone was just saying the same exact thing, but no one was kind of getting deeper into that. So I'm like, if I'm if I'm a, a home buyer and I'm looking at this, like I'm just seeing people putting out the same thing, but no one's really talking about if I'm really buying a house, all of these challenges that might come up. And so I kind of wanted to get a little bit more granular than just the surface and really talk about, hey, these are the real things that you might end up facing when you're buying a house, right? Like, you know, if, if you go and drop, you know, $10,000 in the bank tomorrow and think, oh, I've got, you know, 10 grand in the bank, I'm ready to buy a house, great, yeah. And then you're going to be stuck trying to source where that money's coming from. And I'm yeah. explaining why mm, the source and season. Now yeah. you as a buyer understand, well, yeah, someone's saying, you know, hey, make sure you source your money. If I'm a buyer, I don't really understand the depth of that and right. why. Right. But now I can understand why. So because like I will Just have those step I'll have those times where people are like, aha, the light bulb goes off. Mm-hmm. Now I can understand why. Now I understand why you guys are looking at tax returns. Now I understand why you guys are looking at pay stubs. Now I understand, you know, how this all kind of makes sense if I'm a buyer. Um, even from the part about why buy now versus later, right? Like people that are thinking about buying two years from now or a year from now when rates come down. Why would it make sense to buy now instead of two years from now? Well, hey, we just learned the lesson two years ago when rates came down. What happened? There was a wave of people buying homes, right? right? Mm -hmm. And when rates come back down another year or two from now, what's going to happen? All that wave of people are going to come back, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, into the market and push prices up again. So Mm -hmm. the point what I was trying to say is I like to get a little more granular because I want people to actually really learn something yeah, yeah. and you're coming really, in from like a real honest like direct way to it. way to say it where i'm sure i'm sure it offends some people or maybe they're like oh man this guy was like too honest yeah which yeah. which again i i really appreciate about it um you recently did a piece it was uh i guess one of the more humorous <laughs> ones that i'd seen right it was like the chill yes the chill the loan super officer. chill loan officer yeah, the chill loan officer yeah, yeah yes. with the glasses yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was i there... did bring my glasses just in case you know you wanted me to get into character yeah i was i was curious like was there something i mean being in florida did it make you become super chill or what was it that inspired you to do that kind of piece? um or just to so be a little it, more it was, creative it, it was a, it was two things it, it was it was a creative side of things and so we're, we're in the studio um shooting content and you know one of my guys was like man you know what do you think about all these guys putting stuff out there on on TikTok and um for whatever reason just this image of you know like 
I don't know if you see like a lot of watch guys that, that talk about like watches and they yeah. like just got sunglasses on and and so like I just had this thought of like yeah you know there's this super chill loan officer that's like yeah I've got it you know don't worry you know I'll get it done that type of thing um, and we just had fun with it but really what it was to talk about was the fact that you you want someone that has experience right yeah. when you're buying a house like this is not hey I'm gonna go buy and nothing against it, but like I'm gonna go buy a car that's like thirty, forty thousand dollars, right? Or I'm gonna go buy a watch that's mm-hmm. ten to fifty thousand dollars. Like this is you going to buy your largest investment and purchase of your life. Yeah. Like who do you really want giving you advice? Who do you really want to work with? Right? The guy that you're seeing on again, no offense, but the guy you're seeing on TikTok or Instagram that's like super chilled out, that's telling you, Yeah, like, you know, I got you, this is what you could do, or like you really want to know someone that's got it like all covered, that has the experience, has been through the battles, right? That's seen like every aspect of the industry, that knows every angle of it. That's who you really want to work with. Absolutely. So that's where that came from. <laughs> yeah. It was funny, man. I saw it and, you know, I'd only been following you now for a couple months at this point, but I was like, oh, man, that shit's funny. Like, I, I want to <laughs> see more of that guy. And I started, like, when I commented, like, I saw other comments that were like, kind yeah. of like the same sentiment. Where yes. they're like, you know. So, so we've definitely really kind of come uh, pretty strong with just being straightforward, in your face type of stuff. Um, like, the one that got a lot of a lot of feedback was like, you know, why do some people fail in the industry? And I'm like, because they suck. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I remember, like, this one agent i've known her for like 20 years and like she knows like i'm like this super nice guy and she goes holy shit like where did the filter go and i'm like you know what honestly it's i i want to just tell it like it is yeah yeah and i think we we i mean i know i battle with that because i i like to oh yeah i like to go on blast a little bit sometimes not not specific names or anything Mm -hmm. like that but just scenarios and whatever because it's just so frustrating yes like you said i mean it's just you're you're trying to get it out there whether it's to your peers or whether it's to your you know the consumer and you're just saying look People suck like at their at what they do. Yeah. So be very aware. Yes. It's challenging because, you know, like there's the funny thing is is there's a flavor for every cup, you know? Yes. So you got you're like exactly. you could always be on on point and businessy and businessy and you're gonna have this cup of business, but then you if you get fun sometimes, you're gonna be like, Oh cool, Whoa. I got a little bit of this yeah. business over here. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, and maybe you lose a little bit of that. But at the end of the day, I know you say it often, is that the uh, you know, the people that wanna work with you will work with you and you wanna work with them. And for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it makes that alignment. Absolutely, I agree. Quicker. And and I think even for me, I guess because as long as I've been doing it, and and now I just get to a place where it's like, you get kind of just sick of the bullshit, and so it's like you just want to put stuff out there. And I think honestly speaking, a lot of the feedback that I get from actual consumers, because I get a ton of leads that come in from people that want to do transactional, you know, with uh, refinancing, buying, whatever it is, and you know, the one thing that has just been consistent is. You know, I love how real you are in those videos. I love what you're just saying. And again, because there's so much content out there now, it's for people like how two things, how do you stand out from it? But also how do like how do I think consumers themselves are like, man, how do I know this is real or this is bullshit? Right. And I think people right now are starting to kind of pick up a lot on that, like seeing things and like, yeah, no, that's just crap. This guy's just saying this. But you know what? I can identify and I can I can respect what this guy's doing because you know what? He's not just kind of trying to make it all like roses and whatever. Like he's telling you exactly what it is. So yeah. I, I see like that works. I also sure. feel like there's like the generalization of people from New York just speak a little bit more direct, a little bit more in your face. And maybe like people in Florida, we still have that kind of perception. But is there something that you would say is like the biggest difference between doing loans in New York and then also in Florida from a consumer perspective? Borrower standpoint, what's the biggest difference? Floridians are much nicer. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are amazing. Uh, New Yorkers, oh man, you know. uh, It's tougher. tougher It it is, it is. You know what it is? Um, Again, I I think if you realistically look at it, it's like for the mindset of New Yorkers, it's like you're just, you're on the go and it's like you don't have time to waste. So like you just want to get everything done. Like just 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 tell me what I got to get you. Just let me know you're going to get this done. Boom 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 boom. This is what I want. So like there's no real time to interact and really be personal and mm. and that's like get of stuff. to the point. It's like just get it yeah. done. Like are you going to get this loan closed? Am I going to get this house? What do I need to do yeah. to get this done? And that's how it is. Um in Florida it's more like hey, you know, like let's talk. Like, yeah. So it's like, in New York it's like <laughs> 
a long strategy of building trust and Floridians are just trustworthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one way of putting it because they're just like, Absolutely. oh, man, what do you need, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and so that's that's the real big difference. Um, you know, again, for me, it's just it's just knowing what people and reading people, right? I, because of the experience that I have, it's very easy to kind of feel people out in the first conversation of what, what type of personality they are. Um, but like I said, in, in New York, it's like because, you know, if you think about it, most people are up at like six, they got to get their kids out, they're out working, they got to travel on the train. So you're talking about, you know, their commute might be like an hour, two hours going to work, then another, you know, you get out at five, six o'clock, seven o'clock, another two hours commute, you get home, feed the kids, you got to get to bed to do it all over again. Shit. So like, yeah. do you really want to spend 45 minutes to an hour on a phone with, you know, your loan officer, right? Like, not really. The last guy I yeah. want to talk to. Yeah. I, I'll tell you this much. I had about a, a, a nice 35 to 45 minute conversation with someone that's buying down here. And it was like, okay, you, you do that with someone in New York. It's like, but hey, it's after more, five minutes, it's, it's, like, it's along going. the lines of your, your um, pseudo cool mortgage. Yeah. Guy. Like, because it is a little more relaxed. Yeah. And, and, exactly. and not so like under the pressure where it is Correct. in New York where, man, I just hear people having to get on the subway and go, you know, an hour or whatever yeah. it is, a bus. And I mean, it's just crazy. Yes. Like it's always on the go. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the only, the only difference um, is, which is funny, is the time frame to close, right? So like Florida, it's typically 30 days, right? Where it's New York, you could be like 60 to 90 days. Right. Yeah. So the, it's like, you would kind of think it would be the, yeah, opposite, the opposite, right? Like, because like, Again, everyone in New York has no time to waste, so you think they would just want to get it done over and you know completed in like thirty days. But again, because it's an attorney state, typically you know you're looking at sixty to ninety days. Yeah, they have a longer diligence period. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but what I can say is, the majority of people still don't want to wait that long. Like sellers, buyers, you know, our our average transaction is still about thirty to forty five days max. In New York. And in New York. Yeah. Um, and again. If most people wanted it to, like we would, we would close loans in twenty, thirty days on average. How many people are in your office, like employed? Like, I mean, do you have like? I mean, so I have a staff, yeah. right? So directly under me, I have a staff of eighteen. The company itself has a staff of a hundred and thirty-four right now. I think or one hundred and thirty-five. Oh, yeah. That's that's uh, but how many rather have, large? Yeah, but how many like the fourteen that are under you? Are, how many of those are mortgage bankers like yourself, or are mm -hmm. you the only mortgage banker? No, so I'm I'm the SVP, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, if the last I checked, we had about close to 80, 80 to ninety loan officers. And then the rest is just all like operational. Oh, you call staff. them loan officers. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So, so those was, are like sales guys. Where I was going officers. with that and mm -hmm. questioning um, was here in Florida. Are you? Are you, have you started like vetting out some Absolutely. loan officers here? <laughs> I mean, how many you got? Beauty know? of social media. Yeah. So believe it or not, you know, yeah. I, I kind of put a little feeler out there, just saying, hey, you know, I'm looking to open up something down here, launch something, and believe it or not, we had a couple of loan officers that actually reached out. I have a meeting next week with uh, a loan officer that's been in the industry. Uh, for about six years, five or six years. And, uh, you know, she's like, hey, I, I'd love to hear more about what you guys are doing. And, uh, you know, so we have a meeting. But, yeah, um, you know, we've been getting some really great feedback and definitely want to build out a branch down here, hire some loan officers, get some, you know, uh, operations people down here and really build it out. Yeah. And, and, and looking at, you know, more of like even in the Orlando area. Um, so we want to probably launch – a couple of different branches out here, you yeah. know, one more on the space coast and then one more in, Lino, uh, you know, in like Orlando and then see where it goes from What's there. the timeline look for you on that? Like with regards to your first one, maybe I space coast like I in the next year, say, this year, 2023 I, or? I would yeah. say within the next three months. Oh, oh wow. Like, yeah. Cool. I, uh, one thing about me is this, I, I don't, I don't waste time. Yeah. I, uh, I'm super like, let's go, let's get this done. If I see potential that's there, for me, it's like, hey, the faster I can get this done, the better it is. If I could sign a lease tomorrow on a space that I love, which has been a little bit of a problem for me right now, but if I can find something that I love and I could sign a lease on it, I would do it right now and start building it out. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would appreciate that too. Like, you know, I guess Florida, we kind of have the the vibe where it's like chill and easy going, but I think there's a lot of people that appreciate that directness, especially like on the Space Coast, and I can't really speak much on Orlando, but a large portion of our demographic over there is military engineers, people that are very you know, more calculated about kind of mm -hmm. time and efficiency. Yeah. Like, I think that's something that would, would land really, really well. And, and we did talk about that when we first Absolutely. met. And I think it would obviously be smart kind of ex 
expanding into the Orlando area because it's sure. such a larger. We're even talking about the agent count. Like you guys have twenty four thousand real estate agents in Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. We're in Brevard. We, we're probably around five to six thousand. Wow. To give you like perspective, yeah. Um, yeah. right? So yeah. really Orlando is huge. Yeah. <laughs> an hour and fifteen away. Yeah. 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 Orlando is a huge, huge area, huge and Jesse market. knows the market really well, and he's been really good at like kind of educating me on the different pockets of it. But yeah. I, I've been in Brevard for ten plus years. I never knew Orlando was as vast. Yeah. That's as crazy. Was. Yeah. But um. But yeah, you know, again, for me, timing is everything and opportunity is everything. And that's the one thing that I've learned throughout my career um, is just, you know, when you see opportunities, you don't you don't waste time. You just you strike while the iron is hot. That's it. And so I see the opportunities that are here. You know, I'm on the phone with the owner of the company every day and we're talking about, hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is what's happening. And he's like and, and I have to say also. It, it's great having the owner of a bank that's like that. That's like, hey, I trust you. If you see the opportunity, run with. It. Just let me know what you need. We'll get it done. You know. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So that's where it all kind of goes hand in hand, right? In terms of the company and what we're able to offer, because if that mindset is, hey, let's let's do what we got to do. Let's let's take advantage of the opportunities. Let's you know set up uh, the flows of what we think is going to work best to get deals closed then that just makes my job easier, mm -hmm. right? Because then everyone's in that same mindset. You know, I have meetings with our operations staff on Mondays. And I'm like, what are we closing this week? And my answer from all my operations staff is everything. They look at their pipeline. They're like, we'll close everything. <laughs> That's their mindset every single Monday. I'm like, what are we closing? Everything. everything. They, don't, they don't think. And if they have a chance where they can literally close their entire pipeline, they will do it. That's how they push. Yeah. That's that's just the mindset that's out there. And again, you know, some people think it's a great thing. Some people think it's not because then there's a question about quality of life type of thing. But here's how I look at it. You know, real estate right now just has this glamour to it, I feel. And there's just so many people that want to invest and do fix and flips. And I don't know if you guys talk a lot about it down here, but like, you know, mortgage hack and, mm -hmm. you know, all this kind of stuff. But like, there's just this huge lens on real estate right now. I don't know how, however long that's going to last and play out. Who knows, right? But I look at it, if there are people that want to buy right now and there's opportunity, then I'm going to play into that and take as much advantage as I can. In, in, in offer, yeah, in offering a service because, I mean, I'm sure logistically you don't, you guys don't close everything. No. But what's most important is that it's you'll get to yeah. letting the client know sooner than later yes rather than like saying hey you we need to do a b and c mm -hmm. in order to to move this to the next level yeah. and you let them know faster than absolutely yeah. and and like i said i think it's the mindset i would say it's yeah. um and throughout my career you know uh and i've heard from other people because i know a lot of people in the industry and uh the one thing that you'd hear about like operations like processors or underwriters it's like we're laid back right so it's like if the borrower provides paperwork <laughs> then i will move this and move right. it along or if we get x amount of paperwork like so if we get the majority of the paperwork then we'll work on it and kind of move it along right um our operation staff is different like they're calling that borrower saying hey i need this 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 if you could get me this by this time, I could get your file into underwriting by this time. I could get your file cleared by this time. I could get you closed by this time. So their foot is always on the gas, kind of driving it. that transaction, right? They're yeah. driving that borrower. They're driving that title company in New York. They're driving the attorney. They're, they're kind of really putting the emphasis on, hey, let's get this going. And so I don't think everywhere has that kind of mindset and mm -hmm. every lender has that type of mindset. Um, that's 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 the way our uh, our staff is. What do you do? I mean, you're doing a ton of volume, and it sounds like you're, you work your ass off. Is there a what is what does the balance look like with your work to life? What does that balance? So how does it exist? Look, for me, I've I've been very fortunate. I have a wife that's super supportive. Uh, she's been that forever for me, um, and she knows I am passionate about my career and what I do. So, you know, in the beginning when I needed to work seven days a week and, you know, 12 hour days and 13, 14 hour days, she was like, you know, you do what you got to do. I'm here. Um, now I definitely obviously have the opportunity where I can kind of find a little bit more of a balance. But, um, you know, I kind of look at where the priorities are and I've kind of learned now how to kind of balance certain things. So especially with technology. I can get up at five o'clock in the morning and knock out, you know, half of my day's work in two to three hours 
you're like, okay, so now I have half of my day that I could go spend with my family, right? You know, um, and I've been doing that down here. And then I could jump back on at five o'clock in the afternoon or eight o'clock at night and knock out the rest of whatever I have to do or knock that out for the next day. So, you know, I, I definitely now believe in that work-life balance and it's important to have that. But what I would always do before it was like, hey, you know, you work hard, take a vacation, like refresh. re-energize yourself, yeah. refresh yourself, take a two weeks off, get back, boom, get to it again. We, and that's what we would do. We had Brett Young on who is a, uh, runs a Urban Young, which is an insurance, insurance provider out yeah. here. And his thing with his uh, staff is work-life integration. Mm-hmm. They talk about that. We're like realizing like the balance. I mean, for guys like us, and I, I know Jesse and I talk about this a lot as far, because we all, I think, have the same mentality. Like, want to be the best we can. We but yeah. we get up early, bust our ass, like work hard, mm-hmm. want to spend time with our family, but we're all really passionate about what we do. So mm-hmm. like that work, work-life integration really resonated. Um, is there something, a part of your routine where you're just like, I'm doing this and it clicks? Like, is it waking up early? Is it, you know, something you drink in the morning? Is it working out? Is there anything that you're doing that's kind of I a am, secret sauce? I am a super systematic person. Like, I, if I don't do one of those things, that it, it, like, okay, so... I wake up in the morning, you know, for me, it's like, first thing is I, I gotta, I gotta exercise, right? I gotta hit the treadmill. I gotta exercise. I gotta do something like that. Like now I go on the beach, I, I run, I walk, I do whatever, right? I get back. I have to take time to meditate. I meditate, get my mind right, like right, ready, everything, have coffee. Well, I'll do like a shake and stuff like that. Make sure my nutrition is good. Then take a shower, have to get dressed. Like I can Whether you're going in appointments or not, right? I cannot, like I work from my home office in in my condo and i look like this because it's just i've done it for so long it just it's almost like putting on a character like this is me and if i don't do that my whole day is thrown off so i have to follow that same regimen and if i don't if i miss something it just throws my entire day off but when i when i get to complete all of that right in the morning i can conquer that entire day no matter what comes my way and the majority of my day is dealing with, with issues, with problems. And people say that like to me all the time, like how do you possibly deal with so many issues all the time? <laughs> Welcome to real estate. <laughs> yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and again, that's 90% of my days is, is, is dealing with that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, because if you take time to find a system that works for you and you prep yourself mentally, physically, you can handle anything. The stress, it, it, it just honestly, it just kind of like bounces off. Yeah, we have stressful days, but I find ways to let go of that and just continue that system going. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I have to have that regimen. The routine. Yeah. yeah. Nice. One of the first, like when I first got in the real estate going on seven years ago, the, one of the first guys I listened to, his name was Ryan Fletcher. And Ryan Fletcher, was a, like he did mortgages. He also sold real estate, was a copywriter. But he used to say that when he would go to networking events and mm-hmm. people would ask like what he does for a living, he would say, I slay dragons. Yeah. <laughs> and people are like, what, the, what does that even yeah. mean? And then you get into it. So like it made me think about that. Whereas like in real estate, I do think like most of our days putting out fires, slaying those dragons, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever it is to kind of get through it. And it all starts to me like within the morning routine. And I know Jesse is, is really adamant about that too. Cause if we don't hit those, like our days, like way fuck. Yeah. And not only that, if you just, if you miss something in that morning routine <clears throat> That's what I say, on a off. day that even you didn't feel good or whatever, it's just like, uh, the day is gone. Yeah. It's just a yeah. total yeah. waste or, yeah. Yeah, we're sitting around cool, cool mortgage guys in your sweatpants <laughs> and letting the deals sweat come through. in your straw hat. Like, it yeah. ain't happening, you right. know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would probably say if it's one thing, meditation has made the biggest difference for me. When you're um, like, can you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah. So, Trans- so, so for me, it, it's a lot of it is actually like um, more uh, like biblical kind of stuff, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, um, religious type of things. But, I kind of started integrating that into the morning routine of taking time to just after exercising because it started realizing I'm like, hey, man, I, I used to kind of really like go hard exercising, you know, weights, treadmill, all that kind of stuff. And physically, I was great. But then like then I would like get ready, get into the office and I would just feel like everything's just rushed. Right. Because that adrenaline's just yeah. pumping. And so like when I got into the office and I'm like hitting these, you know, uh, issues that are coming up and it's just like i'm going 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 but then i would find that throughout the day mentally i was just so burnt out and then i was like you know something i think it's super important that if i'm going to actually start my day it's got to be mentally and physically and then when i started kind of integrating that time of like 15 30 minutes of just trying to prepare myself mentally 
So now when I leave mm. the house, I'm just, I'm just so calm because mm. my body now is just, it's worked out, but it's relaxed. But more importantly, my mind is. It's in check. So when I get into that office, and the minute I hit that office, the phone rings, someone's in my yeah. office, hey, we've got an issue, this closing's happening, this came up, that came up, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool, let's do this, get that, get that one on the phone, let's do this. Yeah, Done. so now you're not only physically prepared, you're mentally, mentally. prepared. How long have you been doing the meditation? Yeah. Um, I started out about maybe four years ago. Now, and what's the duration <clears throat> of it? Um, like I said, it, it'll be, it depends. 10 to 15. Like 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And I think, uh, like, I mean, I'm fascinated with it, and I don't want to take up the rest of the, the show with this, but yeah. for pe for someone that's, like, really intrigued by that and interested in meditation... Yeah. Where would you suggest they start? Yeah, yeah, what, like, how do you calm? start? Like, whether it's, like... I guess I, I'm more curious about, are you sitting down? Are you standing up? Are your eyes closed? What are you thinking about? Are you doing the whole little, no. like... So, you know, like, I, I... Believe it or not, I, I, I go in a closet. I go in my closet. It's completely dark. I sit there. I just breathe. Because, again, it's pretty much, like couple minutes after I finish exercising. So I'm still like sweating and whatever. Breathe, breathe. And then for me, again, it's more like religious. So like I have an app. Mm -hmm. yeah. I read, I read that word for the day. I stop, I think about it. Just think about, you know, just let it all kind of sink in. Um, just listen to some music. Again, then I'll just sit there for another couple of minutes. And again, there's no timer to this. It's just, it just kind of happens to kind of work out within that time frame. But then before I end, I just, I sit there for another couple minutes, just again, allowing my mind to just relax, not really thinking about work, not thinking about family, not thinking about anything, just listen to myself breathe. And then that's it. You close nice. it out. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I know some people believe in it, some people don't. For me, I would just say that's, that's the one thing that just kind of clicked a little extra that allows me to do everything that I need to do. Because again, especially, for me, and I know real estate agents are the same thing, like your day is just super busy. You're on the phone all the time. So it's always just kind of mental, 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 mental pressure. So if you could just have that clarity and that little bit of break in that time where your just mind is just so relaxed, I think that capacity to handle things um, just really just increases. Yeah, I think yeah. it's I think it's mental health. I mean, we've talked we, about that a handful lot. of times. Yeah. We're trying to get guests on because I think March is mental health awareness yeah. month. So we have a doctor coming on to talk about it. But like mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people know how to meditate, so thank you for walking us through that. <laughs> and I think yeah. everyone has a different definition or, or version yeah. of what meditation might mean to them, whether mm -hmm. it's spiritual or you know, yeah, religious or whatever. Like how maybe, important but one or the other is each day. Just taking uh, the time, I yeah. think, to like internalize your thoughts, get that mental clarity, and slow down yes. before the chaotic life of what is mm -hmm. real estate. Yeah, like I would agree on all the sentiments that yeah. you nailed. Where it's like it's, it's helped me out extremely. Um, a lot to kind of bring it down because then you can handle all this shit and you almost feel like more calculated about it. Like you're not absolutely rushing like, oh shit, uh, you know, it's like I, you, I remember that life. Yeah. And then it's, once you start meditating, like everything is just like, oh, it's a problem, but I'll deal with it. Like, how are you so calm about it? Well, yeah. you know, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm solution oriented. I'm and, gonna fucking you know, believe it or not, it's funny because my staff even noticed it. Like my staff even noticed years ago when I started it and they're like, man, like just nothing phases you. Like we can literally have just everything burning down and you're just like all right well just grab water from here or just do that or just do this <laughs> um and so like that's even helped like even for me after work just putting me in a different mindset just it's amazing how much more i've been able to accomplish because for me that's all day long is just problem solving right mm -hmm. because i'm dealing with such a huge volume of, of loans and you know, again, it, it comes with its complexities, uh, especially in New York, where there's just so much happening out there with, with on a deal. And it's you've got to be a problem solver and you've got to figure out ways to make these deals close. So the the more clarity you have up there, the more you can kind of figure out how to how to problem solve. It's amazing. The, yeah. the, the minor amount of investment, but the the extraordinary the return, on, return on investment. Yes. On that because yes. It, it literally takes nothing but you and time. Yeah. Uh, to invest yeah. in it yeah. and your return is yeah. is far greater yeah yeah it's which incredible. i mean that's a great kind of thing to close i think on, close yeah. out out on it um so like thank you for again sharing the meditation hacks everything about sort of like what you've done and how you're bringing your business down the florida i think is going to be a, a phenomenal success and i do think it's something that the market here definitely needs we deserve someone like you and need someone yeah, like you so it. really really appreciate Absolutely. your time today sharing everything you have um if someone were to look up 
whether it's the the chill mortgage broker guy, mortgage banker, um, <laughs> or any of the content, what is it? What is the best kind of platform that we can plug for you? At the underscore mortgage underscore expert. That's it. The mortgage <laughs> That's expert. So That's awesome. It, we, I think we had a show where we talked about like, how did no one else have that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how would how would because I mean, listen, if, for people that are listening and potentially watching, how would they? get to your website mm. or whatever, you know what I mean? Because obviously you lend in Florida. So yes, yes, yes. Sure. So again, they, they can do find me. you lend me. nationwide? We do. Uh, well, not fully nationwide. We're in about 26 states right okay. now. So either way, how would you? But pretty much up and down the East Coast. So yeah. like if anybody wanted to find out more about me, they could go to our company website, which is www.mfmbankers.com. That's Mary Frank, Mary Uh I'm cool. right there. You'll see my info. Um, again, you can look me up, Raj and Ramdahal. I'm sure I'll come up on your Google search when you do that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, you can you can get my information there and uh, follow me on Instagram. Yeah, his, his account's really good. It so is good. It's <laughs> it <laughs> great. All that great content. I mean, I learn a lot about yeah. from mortgages and also like how the hell does this guy keep up with all this shit. So I'm glad yeah. you shared that with us also. Yeah. Uh, but Raj, really appreciate you being on today. And uh, also, thanks for sharing your little tips about Valentine's Day, too. So hopefully this year I don't blow yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, which is super important, right? Yeah, you got to make sure we, uh, we we take time out to make sure uh, Valentine's keep the, Day is handled. Keep the wives happy. Keep, keep the family happy. Yep. Keep the wives happy. I'm not going to say it because my wife hates it, but happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, man. Yeah. So thanks for everyone that's watching and yep. listening. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, we always appreciate that. Uh, if you hit the like button, it'll help promote this show to other people that would enjoy it just as much as you. And again, Raj, thanks for your time. Looking forward to the next episode. See you guys. Thank you, guys.